cool. Okay, so this is going to be a short lecture because I don't want to make it too bogged down. Um, truth be told, I just want to give you guys the information that I have and kind of keep this one relatively simple. So, basically, a lot of people have been saying, hey, I'm interested in VGC. I don't know how to go to tournaments. Um, and I've been getting this question a lot. How do I find tournaments near me? Like, how do I qualify for Worlds? Stuff like this. And so, I wanted to make a, a put together a, a PowerPoint on how you qualify for Worlds, how you get points, what are championship points, how to find events, and all that, all that good stuff. So basically, let's start with tournament structure. For, or this should be circuit structure, probably. So the way the circuit works is that when you go to an event, if you do well enough, enough in quotes, um, you get CP. CP stands for championship points. Um, and these championship points have two purposes. Number one, they let you qualify for the world championships. Day one and day two, there's two different types of invites. Um, and number two, they can earn you travel awards to internationals and worlds. There's five levels of, event, of events. Uh, four of them provide CP, five if you count online challenges. The first is the world championships. That's the top level. These are from top level to lower down. So number one is the world championships. That's the, that's the end goal of every year structure. The world championships is only one every single year. And they don't provide CP. They provide money and I wouldn't say fame necessarily. But the world championships are what are the point of CP. I think trading cards... I think TCG provides uh, CP, but for VGC, we do not. Number two is internationals. So internationals, there's four of. One in um, the US, one in Latin America, one in Europe, and then one in Oceania. Uh, there's four of them throughout the year. These, This is per year. Regionals and special events, those are the same level. Special events are just like regionals. They provide the same level of support, or they provide the same level of points, but they do not provide the any, I believe they don't provide any money, um, but regionals will provide money. Um, Mid-season showdowns and premier challenges are the two levels of locals. So, mid-season showdowns and premier challenges are common, um, and they're considered like locals. So, when someone refers to a local, they're talking about they're talking about premier challenges and mid-season showdowns. Now, it is worth it, it, uh, it is worth noting that these five levels of events are all in person. The exception to that are the online challenges that happen um, over the internet, where you're given a set number of games you can play and, and you get you know ranking points. Yeah, online challenges are the, are the last. Uh, are the last level of event. So Dallas, for example, is a regional championship. It's the lowest level of like the three non-local levels. Yeah. Dallas also had, however, I should mention, Dallas had both a mid-season and a premier challenge, although the main event was the regional. So how do you qualify for Worlds? These numbers are all for Masters. It changes in seniors and juniors, um, the younger divisions. You need 400 points in North America and Latin America. You need 300 points in Europe and Oceania, and you need 200 points in South Africa. Winning an international gives you 500 CP, which is automatically qualifying. Winning a regional gives you 200 CP. Winning an MSS gives you 50 CP, and winning a PC gives you 30 CP. Uh, uh, winning an uh, international or an online challenge as well also also gives you 50 CP. Your best finishes to so best finish is your well best finish. You're basically your top six performances from regionals, PCs, and MSSs, and every international is uh, is used when calculating your points. So if you go to seven regionals. You only get your best finishes from the top six. This changes per year, so depending on the year you're watching this, that might change. But if you're watching in 2020, right now we have six regional, six PCs, six MSSs. Travel awards. So the way that a travel award works is that the year is broken into different quarters, I believe. And the points you earn per quarter rank you, right? So like, let's say I don't have any points, but then in the second quarter, I get 600 points. So that puts me in third overall. Then even though I might not be in like the top four for the whole year... It's only the points that are earned in that quarter that count. So if I'm in the top six, uh, or if I'm number three in, in points that were earned in the quarter qualifying for Berlin Internationals, then I could win a travel award for Berlin Internationals. One, the first through fourth in per period get these bonuses. If you're in region, you get $2,000. If you are um, over 18 and out of region, you get 3500 Numbers are bumped up a bit if you are um, out of, if you are uh, under 18, so you can go with a guardian. If you're fifth or eighth per period, you get a thousand dollars flat, regardless of region, I believe. Yeah. So basically, these are these are probably not relevant to most people because you know obviously only eight people per period per region get them. But yeah, that's how travel awards work. That's the other pur purpose of CP. So I mentioned the top the top amount of points that each tournament gives, but I like this one as well. Uh, this little breakdown here. It shows that for a regional, um, you get 200 points for first, 160 for second, 130 for third and fourth, 100 for fifth or eighth, 80, 60, 50, 40, and then 30. Um, this kicker number that you see here, what that means is that the, these people don't get any points unless you have this number of players. So if I get ninth place, but only 47 people showed up, 
then I wouldn't get any points for my ninth place finish. And for top 32, you need 100 people. For top 64 points, you need 200 people. Top 128, you need 400 people. Does that make sense? Mid-season showdowns and premier challenges are the local events. They have a steeper drop-off. Like, you can see the difference between first and second here is, like, a pretty significant um, drop. Yeah, so... Again, kickers, pretty much straightforward. I'm going to pause here. Do you all have any questions about points so far? You need championship points to qualify for Worlds. You get championship points from these events. You get. You can also use championship points to win travel awards. So Dallas, for example, is a regional. So I finished like 70-something, so I got 40 points because we hit the kicker of 400. Okay, moving on. Last points, um, championship points for internationals are here. You can see there's a pretty big jump in internationals. First in internationals, 500, then 400, 320. Um, but you can see even top 32 at an international is 160 points, which is the same as top, uh, second place at a regional. So, and top 16 is the same place, the same amount of points is uh, as first at a regional. So, yeah. Um, so basically, there the the amount that like it scales is pretty significant. Um, if you get top, you know, 64, you're still getting a lot of points. Given you only need, you know, if you're in Europe, you only need 300 points. That means you go to three internationals, you get top 64. Nothing. That's a good placement. Like, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with top 64 at an internats, but you know, you get two of those, you're almost at your invite. Even in the U.S., you go to three internationals, you get top 64 at all of them. You've got your 10 points away from your, your invite. You know, you get one top 32, you got your invite. So, in some ways, you can qualify just by just by going to enough events, um, and that's true even of premier challenges and mid-season showdowns. So even if you can't afford to go to a really um, a lot of the like internationals or anything. First at an, at an MSS is 50, first at a Premier Challenge is 30, that's a total of 80 points from winning both of them, and you can have 6 each of those. So, 8 times 6 is uh, 480, or 80 times 6 is 480, so you can get 480 points just from these local events, meaning, in theory, you could, you know, you could qualify for Worlds never playing at an event with more than 8 players, as long as you went to your locals and did well, right? I mean, you know, you'd have to be winning, you'd have to be winning, but you can definitely do it off locals. People have done it before, they will do it again. Um... So, the next thing I want to do is I want to actually cover, I want to show you guys how to find events. So, okay, so, here's what you do. You go to Google, okay, and then you go to Pokemon Event Locator, okay? Type that into Google, right? Now you can see I've typed in Pokemon Event Locator. I'm going to click on this page, right? So, this is how you find locals. So, let's say I'm in the U.S., my postal code is, um, I'm going to put in a, I'm going to put in the postal code of my hometown in McLean. So, 2211, right? City of McLean. I really don't want this like showing up. Okay. okay, it doesn't do within 100 miles search distance today. We're gonna put next three months, right? And you can search for we don't want trading card game, we don't want leagues, I only want tournaments, I really only want premier events. Premier events are ones that give um, CP. So, short order event date. I'm gonna hit search. Hmm. Okay, that didn't work. Maybe I have to broaden my search. Um, not any. Let's do 250 miles because I know that there are stuff. I don't know why this isn't working. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I can find events that are somewhat near me, right? There's one in New Jersey. Here's one in West Virginia. Here's one in Raleigh, right? Here's one in Fincastle, which I really would have thought would be, yeah, within two within 100 miles, but I guess not. Um, and you can sort, you can look by by distance or something, right? So these are for these are mostly for local events. So I can see Liberty Garden, which is a well known, which is a well known uh, tournament organizing thing, is having an event in February 16th. Um, and you can do this for, for wherever you live. And th so that's one way of doing things, right? There's a couple other ways that I want to show you. So this is the event locator, which I've shown you. The other thing you can do is, um, you can go here and you can type in Pokemon regionals 2020, right? And now I can go here and I can look at Pokemon regional schedule, blah, 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 blah. Um, US and Canada regional championship schedule. So, and also there's one for Europe here and Latin America and Oceania as well. Um, these are for... I believe for VGC. So yeah, so I can look here and I can say, okay, well, here's Dallas, right? Here are the upcoming regionals. There's one in Collinsville, there's one in uh, Ontario, there's one in Charlotte, Salt Lake City, Albany, Fort Wayne, and Santa Clara, and Mo and of course the the you know the greatest city on earth, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So yeah, now you can find where regionals are because I was so I, so I would recommend. Let's go back to our PowerPoint, right? So if we go here and we say, okay, here's the levels, right? For regionals and internationals. You just Google these. You don't you don't have to use the event locator uh, for these ones. If you want to look for local events, if you want to get involved in your local team, I recommend mid-season showdowns and premier challenges. Now, this events locator honestly can be kind of clunky. Um, I don't. It's not the best thing ever. It's just the best tool we have. Um, you can also, of course, check the internationals, 2020 Pokemon internationals, international championships. 
I've already looked for it, obviously. And now you can go here and it will tell you the date for the four internationals. Oh, the dates for or, uh, nationals now, that's good. Basically, Google's, Google is your friend. Um, and then let's say I wanted to go to, like Dallas is a good example. Now let's say I want to go to Dallas, right? Pokemon regionals, right? I would Google that and then I would say, okay, here's here's the uh, here's the page. Look around here, register. Ugh. 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 Please be cheaper. Okay, well, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, the, and then you just register. So it's, it's pretty much, honestly, guys, it's just Google. Like, a lot of this stuff is just Google. Now, except with the exception of um, the event locator. So the one thing I will say about the event locator is that it's not perfect. Like, I know for a fact that I have events that are closer than this that I guess just aren't on this website for whatever reason or aren't showing up. Yeah, so what I recommend you do is, let's say you, let's say you are a new player or you're a player who wants to get involved in your local scene. The best thing you can do is find somebody else from your region um, and talk to them and be like, hey, what are the events? Who like who like who do I go to to hear if there are events coming up? Like I know from my region, my friend named Kyle will run events or if he isn't running events, he'll know where to go to like or he knows he knows who is running events. So when I want to know, hey, Kyle, do I, like do, do I have any MSS is coming up? I'm not going to I'm not going to go in. The, I haven't used the events locator in, in, in ages. You know, I go I message Kyle and I say, hey, Kyle, what like when's our next midseason? Right. Um. And of course, my experience, like, I don't, I'm not like someone who is super involved in local events. So, um, this is like an area where like maybe other people do it differently, but this is just what works for me. So yeah, because like I said, like, I know that there is an event like 40 miles from me and I'm sure there is, um, I'm sure there's somebody like, I'm sure there, I'm sure that I know that there are events that should have shown up in this search that didn't show up. So the best thing you can do is find someone else in your region who, and, and talk to them. And you know, that's good. Just for multiple multiple ways so maybe start off using the event locator once you go to an event then yeah then then you know build your network like talk to people i hate the phrase build your network but you know what i'm saying like get involved in your community and then once you are in the community then you'll hear you won't need to use the event locator once you're actually in yeah kyle only runs like you know dmv events as far as i know although he's run bigger ones as well but yeah like kyle is a to so find like talk to your local to's you know how you find to's i'm not entirely sure i just like i just know them by going to events but there might be another way. Also, a lot of places have like region specific discords. Like I, I've been invited to the SoCal discord to play Smash. Like there are so like getting involved, like finding people from your region is in my opinion, the best, the best way of doing things. So yeah, honestly, guys, that's all I really planned. Um, I wanted the stream to be short because or I wanted this lecture to be short because um, I didn't want it to get too clunky. Do we have any questions? Let's let's uh, let's open up for questions.